Have you ever noticed that on a sunnier day, you just feel happier, and then on a very gloomy day, you almost feel a little bit sad? Well, I've certainly noticed that, so I thought it'd be interesting to look into whether weather actually impacts our mood and maybe even our physical health as well. So, checking out this post right here, we see how does weather affect our health and mood? So just diving right in here, it's a well-known fact that weather can have an, a significant impact on our mood and overall health, but have you ever stopped to consider exactly why this is the case? And right off the bat, you can start to think of just some possible scenarios. Like what I think about is perhaps maybe the sunshine plays a role in our like circadian rhythms about how we sleep, because if it's a very sunny day, then we feel very energized during the day because it's daytime out versus if it was very cloudy, our body might still maybe think it's nighttime. I, I don't know. That's maybe my guess right now, although we'll see what ends up happening here. So in this blog post, we'll take a closer look at the science behind how weather affects us and what we can do to mitigate any negative effects or impacts. So we're going to start off, it looks like it has two sections here, it goes weather and mood, and then we're going to look at weather and physical health. So starting off weather and mood, it's not just your imagination, the weather really can affect your mood. There's a growing body of research that suggests a link between weather and mental health, with certain conditions having a more pronounced effect than others. So that right, at, right off the bat where I see that there's a growing body of research, I think back to... I, I always see this one scientist from Stanford, his name is Andrew Huberman, and he just talks about different scientific research papers and how you can apply them to your daily life. And one of the videos that I saw of his was about like five steps you could take to improve your health and your life. And one of the steps was first thing in the morning, get at least maybe 10 to 15 minutes of sunlight. So just go outside, go into the sunlight, and that immediately just kicks your day off, right? And I'm sure there's some chemical reasons why that's important, and maybe it talks about that in this blog post. So, for example, studies have shown that bright, sunny days can improve our mood and increase feelings of happiness and well-being. On the other hand, overcast and rainy days have been linked to increased feelings of sadness and, and anxiety. So... I'd, I've certainly felt that in my own way. I'm sure you have too. You could maybe say in the comments whether you actually maybe like rainy days. I know occasionally that can be the case. Like if it hasn't rained for a very long period of time and then it starts raining, I will say there's almost like a feeling of relief. But maybe that's just from being a Californian and my main focus being wildfire. I always just love when it starts to rain, especially at the beginning of the season because it's it's almost like, I wouldn't say your body and mind, but at least the environment is being just refreshed and renewed. So continuing, the link between weather and mood is thought to be due in part to changes in our circadian rhythm. All right, so I got that guess right off the bat. So bright light, particularly during the day, can help regulate our sleep patterns and keep us feeling alert and awake. Conversely, less sunlight can disrupt our circadian rhythm leading to feelings of fatigue and sluggishness. Sluggishness. So basically, basic summary there is, it's very bright during the day, then your body knows it's the daytime, so you wake up a little bit more, and then by the time night comes around and starts getting dark, then it's just that natural rhythm that our bodies are accustomed to. Whereas if it's dark during the day, your body doesn't really have that jolt into daytime awakeness, so then you just maybe feel a little bit fatigued, and then it becomes harder to fall asleep at night. This actually reminds me of something that ties into like this shift. This morning I had to wake up at 2.30 in the morning, so that means I go to bed at about 6.30 at night, and I love this time of the year because at 6.30 it's already dark, and it makes it just much easier to fall asleep. Whereas during summer, where it might still be somewhat light out at 9 p.m. at night, falling asleep for this shift at 6.30 p.m. is nearly impossible. I have to put a dark t-shirt over my eyes. And it ties into what this is saying about circadian rhythm. So when it's bright during the day, dark at night, it makes it easier to fall asleep. And then that can impact your mood because if you only sleep four hours, you're going to feel a lot worse than if you sleep eight hours. And if you're very awake during the day, you're also probably going to get a better, more sound sleep at night. 
So additionally, changes in temperature and humidity can affect our overall comfort level, which can also impact our mood. I would say that also ties into sleep as well. It's, I don't know about anybody else, but if it's like 70 degrees out, I remember some nights when I lived up in the Santa Cruz mountains, it would still be super hot at nighttime and it was just impossible to fall asleep. And then the next day I would be tired. So that was kind of weather and mood. Now let's move on to weather and physical health. So it's not just our mental health that's affected by the weather either. Weather can also have a significant impact on our physical health, particularly in the case of extreme conditions. So right off the bat, I think of heat waves because during a heat wave, you just feel exhausted and it's actually extremely dangerous as well. The, it's interesting how they study this. You can basically look at how many more people die than what you would expect on an average day. But when you have a heat wave come through an area, it doesn't, for most people, it doesn't just kill them right off of the bat, but it pushes anybody who might have been on the edge or already has maybe some ailments or health problems. The extra heat is just the little bit that's needed to unfortunately end up leading to some deaths when those heat waves do happen. So that's why it's always important to take those seriously, drink a lot of water, try to Turn the AC on if you have it, and then if you don't have AC, a lot of times cities will open up cooling shelters, which can be very helpful. And that's also why heat waves are, <laughs> it's a bit of a tangent here, but that's also why heat waves are especially bad in areas that aren't used to heat. So for example, if there's a heat wave in Palm Desert, everyone has their air conditioning, doesn't really have a huge impact on anybody because pretty much summer is just one continuous heat wave down there. But I remember when we had a huge heat wave in Washington and Oregon, it actually did lead to a large amount of deaths because people didn't have any air conditioning, so they weren't able to escape from that heat. And then it's especially bad if the heat wave lasts a number of days where there's just no relief because then your body just has no time to recover. And that's also why overnight temperatures are as important as they are because if, you, if it's not cool overnight, your body doesn't recover and then all that heat just builds onto each other. So, bit of a tangent there, but thought that was somewhat interesting. So, continuing, for example, high temperatures can lead to dehydration, heat exhaustion, and even heat stroke. What we were all just talking about, I don't think I need to expand on that any farther. Further? Further. Uh, on the other hand, extreme cold can increase the risk of hypothermia and frostbite. So, I just one little fun fact about frostbite. I was looking up how long you have to stay in cold water to get frostbite because my cousins and I were doing a plunge in Lake Tahoe last week. And again, don't quote me on this because I only got this from one source. I didn't check multiple sources. So maybe double check this before you go swimming in cold water. But I believe what I read was that you can't get frostbite in water unless in water that's over 32 degrees. So basically if water is below 32 degrees, it's going to be ice. But if it's above 32 degrees, it's not actually cold enough to freeze the water that's in your cells. And that's what's happening in frostbite. It's actually the water in your cells that's freezing. So yeah, I should look into this more. Maybe that'll be the blog post that we talk about tomorrow. But I don't believe it's possible to get frostbite in water that's over 32. It would be possible, however, to get it if the air is maybe well below 32, or if you, maybe you're putting your foot in snow for a long period of time. Not sure why you do that, but that would allow the water in your cells to freeze, which is frostbite. So just continuing, but doing a lot of tangents today, but even more moderate weather can impact our health changes in barometric pressure, for example, have been linked to headaches, joint pain, and other chronic pain conditions. So just one piece of evidence there. My grandfather, without even looking at any weather apps, I think this was even before weather apps, he'd be able to tell you when it was going to start raining, or not exactly the timing, but he would know when rain was on the way because the barometric pressure would be dropping and he would feel it in his knees. He would start to get joint pain. So he'd know the pressure was dropping and he'd say, oh, there's rain on the way better weatherman than I'll ever be. <laughs> um, additionally, some people experience seasonal affective disorder, which is called SAD, well-named, a form of depression that occurs in response to the reduced light levels 
of winter. So how do you mitigate the negative effects of weather on health and mood? So what can we do to mitigate the negative impacts of weather on our health and mood? Here are a few strategies. First off, stay hydrated. Drinking plenty of water, especially during hot weather, can help prevent dehydration and other heat-related illnesses. That one makes a lot of sense. So, And dehydration actually can be a pretty serious issue, so that's a good one. It sounds very cliche, but that is a good one to keep in mind. Exercise regularly. Exercise has been shown to boost mood and reduce stress, even on the gloomiest days. I, I can attest to that. There was about a three-week span during winter where it was just constantly cloudy, and I wasn't able to do my usual hiking or surfing because I have a partially torn Achilles right now. So after that, I just felt like it's saying, you just feel kind of gloomy when the weather's gloomy and you can't exercise. So I joined a gym, started exercising more, and I'm amazed at how much my mood has increased since I had brought regular exercise back into my daily routine. No matter whether it's sunny or rainy out, you feel better when you exercise. So the other one, get outside, spending time in nature, even just for a few minutes a day, has been shown to improve mood and reduce stress levels. My all-time favorite, hiking through like a redwood forest. Henry Cowell is just absolutely beautiful. That's my go-to spot whenever I need to just, you know, decompress. My other advice, eh, maybe I shouldn't give this as advice, but I always just leave my phone at home or in the car when I go hiking or you go to the beach, go for a nice walk. The, it's good to decompress without that phone, especially when you're just outside enjoying nature. It's kind of hard to enjoy nature if you keep pulling out your phone to check if you have texts or emails coming in. Now, with that being said, the reason I'd have to do a disclaimer on that is because it is good to have something just in case things go wrong or you get lost. So, yeah, some, you can decide for yourself. So stay active, engaging in regular physical activity, even if it's just going for a walk, can help counteract the negative effects of weather on our mood. That's pretty much the same as exercise regularly. And then use light therapy. This is actually one that I've heard about, and I think it does work. If you're experiencing SAD, so what was that acronym? It's Seasonal Affective Disorder, or other forms of depression, Light therapy can be an effective treatment. Light therapy lamps mimic the effects of sunlight, helping to regulate our circadian rhythm and boost mood. And I do know someone who lived in Southern California their entire life, and then they moved up to, I think it was like Oregon or Washington, where it was raining just most of the year. And they actually got this seasonal affective disorder. And then they had to buy a lamp to try to and uh, boost their mood, but they did end up just moving back down to Southern California. So I'm not sure how well those lamps actually work, but worth a shot if you don't have the ability to move. So basic summary, in conclusion, weather has a significant impact on our health and mood, but there are steps we can take to mitigate any negative effects by staying hydrated, getting outside, and engaging in regular physical activity. We can help maintain good health and mood even on the gloomiest days. And I'd say the biggest ones that I've found just to increase mood overall, just regular exercise. And then I guess this is where the weather comes into it. If it's sunny during the day and then dark at night, that helps your circadian rhythms. And I would say the number one thing that I've noticed for increasing mood and just overall health is having a consistent sleep routine. And happy to say I'll be able to do that for the next six months because I have a much more much more scheduled routine right now than when I was doing the fill-in shifts all over the weekends, during the week, doing morning shows, night shows, looking forward to waking up at the same time every single day. So hopefully you learned something throughout this video. I know I did, and we have some great sunshine this week, or I'm not, I'm not sure when you're watching this video, but right now we have some great sunshine. So good time to get outside, go for a walk, go to the beach, and enjoy this great weather that we're having. Thanks for watching.